How's it going, boys? Today, I'm bringing you guys a different video. No gameplay today. Today, I'm going to be bringing you guys the top seven tips to help you improve in Rainbow Six Siege. And I want to do this because I want to stick to my original uh, plan of action. That was the point of this channel. And that was to build a community where, you know, we can learn from each other, right? And that can come through gameplay videos, of course, right? But it can also come through dedicated videos just like this. So if you guys learn anything new today or just walk away with something that, you know, can help you out in the future, then please hit that like button, subscribe and comment down below. Tell me what you learned from this video today. And with that, let's just get right into tip number one. Tip number one is going to start here in the menu before you even enter a single game. And it's gonna have to do with your stats and why they don't matter, right? So you go over here, you look at your stats, you see your KD, you see your win loss. And I think people take this much too seriously, especially the KD. And I think there's a variety of factors as to why this is the case, right? Some people come from Call of Duty where, you know, the higher the KD, the better usually you are. Or, you know, people just associate having a high KD with being good at a shooter. And the thing is about Siege is it's completely not the case here, right? And I'll give you guys an example or a, I guess, a saying. And the way I like to look at it is your stats are like a bikini, right? What they show you is interesting but what they don't show you is also very interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I just made that up. But my point is, there are a lot of things that your stats don't show that can influence whether or not you win the game, right? For example, maybe you have a low KD, maybe you have a 0.6 KD, 0.7 KD, 0.8 KD, whatever, whatever it is, right? But you have great map knowledge. You have amazing callouts. You make really good site setups. You know when to bring certain characters and when they do well on certain maps. These kind of things don't show up on the stat sheet, right? But they influence you winning the game honestly more than just getting kills, right? So stop worrying about your KD so much. Your, yes, your KD is slightly important, but it's not the end all be all, right? It, it, you need to work on every facet of your game to become a good Rainbow Six Siege player, right? It's not just about getting kills. It's not just about boosting your KD. There are many factors that determine whether or not you are a good Siege player, right? And there are plenty, plenty of pro players who have KDs that are much lower than me, but are way better than me, right? So that kind of proves the point there. So my recommendation, look at your KD maybe once every seven games. Don't be looking at it all the time and don't be bothered if it goes down. Because again, your KD is not what's going to determine if you're a good player in a game like Rainbow Six Siege. And let's move on to tip number two. Tip number two, stop being over aggressive. This is honestly one of the biggest tips that anybody needs to know when it comes to this game, right? And it starts simply by knowing when to push and when to pull, right? And the basic rule of thumb when it comes to pushing and pulling in this game is man advantages or if you're in a disadvantage, right? So if you are in a man advantage, if it is a 4v3, you need to be less aggressive, right? And here's why. Let's say I'm here, it's a 4v3, right? I'm waiting for somebody to come through and they kill me, right? But I have another man playing here Right, so while he's shooting at me and he kills me, my man is gonna come and refrag. And guess what? Now it goes to a 3v2. We're still at an advantage. Had we all been aggressive, right? Had I been here and he started pushing up to the store, sprinting straight at the guy, he could have killed me and then turned and killed him and then boom, leveled the playing field, now it's 2v2. And that's a much worse position to be in on defense, right? Likewise, if it is a 2v3, you gotta get more active, right? If I know somebody's swinging this, I'm going out, I'm swinging, and then I'm moving, I'm picking up different positions, I'm looking, I'm seeing if there's somebody else, right? I'm still playing smart, but I'm playing aggressive because I need to level the man advantage. I needed to get it back down to a 2v2 or back down to a 3v3. So that way then we can let, uh, settle back in and hold our angles and hopefully win the round, right? And on top of that, as a defender, you do not need to kill everybody to win the round, right? The attackers are on a clock. They have to get into the building within a certain amount of time, plant the bomb and win the round that way without you guys defusing it, right? So. Another example, if you're sitting here, right? And they come over here, they break the screen, right? 
This is a very classic maneuver, right? You're sitting here, you hear them break it, right? A lot of people are gonna go peek and try to get kills. The second you do this, you have done a fatal error, right? Because if you peek this and you die, you have just given them so much space and so much advantage. Whereas when they're out here, as an attacker, they are doing nothing. Guys, they are not threatening you in any way, shape, or form. They're waiting. They're hoping that one of you guys comes out so they can get a free kill, right? But them being out here puts poses no threat to you as a defender. So instead, just play your time. You'll hear them jump in, and then you can go for a swing, right? So stop peeking open barriers like this. This is the worst thing that you could do, and it's something that a lot of people do. I do it, and it gets you killed, and it loses you rounds where if you were just smart and you held and played time, you would have a much better time. And it's the same thing with hard areas that they hard breach. If they hard breach this wall and you're playing attic, don't peek it. Don't just sit there and wait because when they hard breach this wall, what do you think they're looking at? They know where people play. They know there's gonna be somebody in attic most likely. So the second they hard breach that wall, that's where they're looking. And if you swing out, they're gonna tap you, dude. Yes, you have peekers advantage, but there's way more space for you to have to cover and predict where they're going to be as compared to what they're going to see and where they're going to be looking, right? So moral of the story is stop peeking open areas that people are breaching. Instead, play your time, use sound cues, use information that you have from your gadgets and play off of them instead, right? And again, man advantage matters a lot. So if you can employ this into your games, I guarantee you, you guys are going to see an improvement in the amount of rounds you win and the amount of games you win, and you'll actually be getting more kills because if you force them to have to rush, if there's only 15 seconds and there's two people queued up out here, they're going to have to rush in, jump in, start running, looking for plants. And when people start going crazy like that, that's when you get the freest kills in this game, right? Because they're not going to have time to slowly get through the building, check every angle and do all that. So again, Stop being over aggressive and be smart, play time. Now, when it comes to attacking, in terms of being over aggressive, you need to stop rushing into buildings too quickly. You need to use your drones. There's a reason that you have drones in this game. Use them, gain info, and play off of that info, right? If you're just playing Call of Duty and you're just running through the building trying to get kills, you're gonna die from so many different places. It's, it's impossible. You're never gonna rank up and you're never gonna win games, right? So as an attacker, use information to your advantage, but also understand that you're on a clock, right? So there is a point where you have to start pushing. You do have to start getting aggressive, right? But you can do it smartly based on the information that you're getting from your teammates, from your drones, from your abilities, whatever it may be, right? So that's it for tip number two, boys. Again, make sure stop being super aggressive. And also one more thing, when it's a 4v1 and you're on defense, Stop rushing to get the final kill. Stop just baiting. Like, you know the guys out here, so two people plus you just start conga lining, looking to get a kill out here. Boys, this is a big mistake that people do, and then next thing you know, it's a 1v1, and you just threw the whole round, right? If there are 10 seconds left, and you know the guys out there, either he's going to jump in, and you're gonna get the freest kill of your life, or he's gonna just sit out there, bait, play streaks, and then it doesn't matter, and you win the round. Because again, you don't have to get the kills to win the round. So with that, let's move on to tip number three. All right, guys, the next tip I have for you guys is all about drones. And it's about using your drones effectively and correctly, right? I could make a whole video just about this one topic because it's that important, okay? And it starts off simply by using process of elimination to figure out where players are going to be which bomb site they're going to pick without having to expose your drone, right? So let's make a little example here. It's round one of Oregon. You drone through this part. Now, 99, 95% of the time, you know they're gonna be kids' dorms, right? It's a very obvious, it's a very common place that people like to start with, right? But how do you use process of elimination to guarantee that, right? When you drone in here, all you have to do is do a quick check you'll hear them reinforcing, right? But you can you can drive your drone all the way down here and check. Okay, boom, they're not basement. We know they're not basement because we don't see the bomb. Okay, that's one spot eliminated. Now we can just quickly come over here and just listen. We don't even have to drone all the way over there. And we know they're not gonna be there, right? And if we did, we'd know because they're reinforcing, you hear them putting down traps, you hear all kinds of stuff, you hear people stomping around, right? But again, it's round one. So 95% of the time, we know they're gonna be up there. And by this time, one of your teammates has probably ran in there and scanned the bomb. And that leads me to part number two. Part number two is stop running your drone straight into sight. So many people, I see this all the time, they just run their drone like this. Oh, ooh, 
I scanned a bomb. I scanned a bomb, guys. And then boom, their drone is dead. They've just lost an extremely important piece of utility, right? Just for what? To scan the bomb in a couple of opponents? It's very foolish to do this, right? Instead, what you need to do is place your drones in surrounding areas without having them get exposed, right? So again, you come through the screen barricade, right? You know most likely they're playing 2F. So you're gonna drive your drone up these stairs and you're gonna go slowly, right? Because you don't want it to get shot when you get up here. So you're gonna just take your time, get up here slowly. Okay, cool, we're clear. We're gonna duck here into um, armory and we're gonna jump up, boom. Now this drone is very safe. And on top of that, this drone can be pivotal in whether or not you win the round, right? Because now when the round starts, I'm gonna run my way to armory super quickly, right? And when I get to armory, I can get on the rappel right away and I already have a drone in the building. So I don't have to break the screen and alert people around armory that I'm entering through armory, right? So now the round started, I'll get off of this little vantage point that I had and I'll check. I'll slowly peek around this corner. Okay, I don't see anybody there. And then I come over here. Oh, look at that. There's a lesion playing right there. He's waiting for somebody to break through the main gr uh, green and he's gonna try to go for a kill. Guess what? Legion doesn't even know that I'm in here. Yeah, he might hear my drone, but the vast majority of the time he's gonna be too focused on the players entering from the front of the building, right? So now, because I had this drone and I didn't get a shot during the drone phase, I can get in the building super quickly and I can enter and I might just get a free kill, right? On top of that, I still have two drones, right? So let's say I killed that Legion. Now I'm droning through here, I'm droning through here. Right, I'm here and then boom, they had head holes here, they, they shot my drone. I didn't notice it, sucks, you know, I lost my drone. But guess what? I still have another drone, right? So, because I didn't sell my drone in the beginning of the round, I have another drone to work with. So now I can be more smart, more careful, and drone my way through the building, identify opponents, and make swings based on information that I have, rather than just being blind, right? And simply put, boys, imagine if Ubi just got rid of drones, right? Imagine if Ubi's like, yeah, we're getting rid of drones. We don't like them. Do you know how hard it would be to attack without your drones? If that's the case, why are you just letting them get smoked in the beginning of the round, right? You know they're valuable. You know they're important. So start treating them like that, right? Put them in good spots and use it to your advantage, right? And I guess a tip, if you're playing in a five stack, what you want to do is you want to have one guy who's dedicated to go scan the bomb and try to scan as many opponents, right? Because it is important to know who they're playing and so you can play around that, right? If, if you scan a lesion, like you'll know, okay, we need to be a little slower. We need to make sure we're shooting the lesion mines. Or if you scan like a cap can, oh, maybe we should switch to a Brava, right? So there is merit to scanning the players and the bomb site, but there is no merit to five of you guys pile driving your way through trying to scan the bomb and scan opponents that is very dumb right so one person goes everybody else sets up their drones in favorable areas you know maybe somebody comes here in master puts their drone here to see if anybody's going to come do a spawn peek somebody can go and maybe if they can get their way into attic without getting shot boom now they have we have an attic drone and just so on and so forth right so just be smarter with your drones, guys. Treat them like they should be treated because they are the most important piece of utility in your kit. Whether you like it or not, they are super important and without them, it's very hard to win rounds, right? So that's tip number three, be smart with your drones. And so yeah, with that, let's move on to tip number four, guys. All right, for tip number four, the tip is stop listening to people who tell you to use certain operators, use certain attachments, and use certain sends, right? To be fair to them, right, wherever you find this information from, whether it may be YouTube, TikTok, wherever it is, Reddit, I don't know, wherever you're looking for Rainbow Six, Six Siege info, right, they're not necessarily trying to troll, right? They might tell you, hey, on Yana, you should uh, use Compensator instead of Flash Hider, right? And from their perspective, they're actually giving a good piece of information, right? But what you don't realize is that everybody plays this game differently, right? And especially when it comes to attachments, everybody has different things that they like, right? Certain people control recoil in certain ways. Some people like to pull straight down, some people like down left, some people that like down right, whatever it may be, right? And so for somebody who likes Compensator, you might not be one of those people who Compensator actually helps, right? So here's my thing. I'm not saying disregard what they give you. I'm saying, listen to what they have to say and then say, okay, I'm gonna go into the shooting range and I'm gonna try this out for myself. 
If I like it, I'm gonna try it in the game. If I don't, then clearly it's not an attachment that's meant for me, right? It's that simple because at the end of the day, you need to be using operators and attachments and sensitivity that works for you. Everybody's different. And if you're just trying to listen to what people tell you, it's gonna make the game a lot harder. And this is something that I fell into. It's a trap that I fell into. When I first started playing this game, I would always be on TikTok. I'd always see these attachment videos and whatever. And I would just go and put them on in the middle of a game. First game, I would just hop on and just put all these attachments on and I would do terrible, right? And I'd be so confused. I'm like, this doesn't look like anything that I saw in the video. And it's because it just wasn't meant for me. It wasn't the attachment that I was supposed to be using, right? And this goes for operators as well, right? If you see somebody saying, oh, this is the best attacker in Siege, right? But you've used this character a bunch, right? Like for example, if they say Dokubi, Dokubi is the best attacker in the game. But you've used Dokubi a lot, and the problem is you're just really bad with DMRs. Then don't use Dokubi, right? She may be a very good operator, but if you can't do anything with her, then there's no point of playing her, right? And what I recommend for this specifically is to go onto R6 Tracker and look at your previous games. Look at which operators you do well with and which operators you don't do good with. And pick the ones that you do good with, because there's a reason you're doing good with them, right? So keep using them. Don't fix something that isn't broken, right? And finally, when it comes to sends, do not under any circumstances listen to what people tell you when it comes to sends, right? Sends is one of the most personalized things in this game. And if you're just listening to people, you're gonna get these crazy senses that just don't work for you, right? Maybe you'll get one that actually works, but majority of the time, it's gonna be a nightmare, right? So my recommendation is again, go into the shooting range. If you wanna put your sends up, put it up a good amount, right? Then go into the target drill, try out the sends. If you're like, oh, this is way too high, put it down. If it's too low, put it up a little bit and just keep adjusting up and down until you find something that works for you, right? So that's tip number four. Let's move on to tip number five. All right, guys, tip number five is a very simple one, but I think it's one that people don't do as much as they should be. And tip number five is simply learn the maps inside and out where the defaults are, where the bomb sites are, where common uh, defender spots are. All of these things are things you need to learn in order to take your game to the next level, right? And two recommendations I have for you is to use these training uh, things that Ubi gives you, right? There's target drill and there's landmark drill. The landmark drill teaches you how to get through the map and it shows you different areas within the maps, right? So for example, on Oregon, this is one that a lot of people know, so that's why I'm gonna give this example. It'll show you, hey, this is dorms. Hey, this is kids. This is where the bomb will be, right? So it'll tell you where these places are and what they're called, but it will also give you common routes to get to those areas, right? Now, obviously Oregon is a more simple map, but something like Nighthaven Labs, and you can see I actually have it on Nighthaven Labs. This is a map that I struggle with, right? Because first of all, I don't play it a lot, but second of all, it's very big and I find it quite confusing, right? So. I like to do the landmark drill. I like to do the target drill on Nighthaven Lab so I can slowly learn the map better more than just playing on it here and there, right? Secondly, there's the target drill. The target drill, in my opinion, is a great, great tool. It's not only a great tool, but I like to use it to warm up, actually. It's just really nice. And what the target drill will do is whichever map you choose, it will set up dummies throughout the map and it will tell you where they are and it'll tell you to go eliminate them, right? But not only that, it will set them up in areas where defenders commonly play, right? So this will help you gain that muscle memory of where you're checking first when you're entering buildings and entering certain rooms within certain maps, right? And I think this drill is just super helpful to not only learn common defender positions, but also to kind of develop attack strategies on how you want to push to certain bomb sites, right? So. These are all important things that you need to get in your repertoire if you want to get better at Siege, right? Because you have to think about when you first started playing this game, right? All the maps were foreign to you and it was a nightmare, right? You didn't know how to get upstairs. You didn't know where anything was. You would see the bomb site, and you still wouldn't know how to get there, right? Like it, it was a nightmare. You'd walk into a building or a room and you'd just get cooked from some guy making a random head hole in like a random area. And you're like, what the heck? I didn't even know he could do that, right? So learning the maps takes time, but it's something you can accelerate by doing these drills, right? You learn the maps by playing the game, but if you do these drills, it's gonna help you get better quicker 
and learn the maps because honestly, learning the maps is one of the most important things. So try these out, see how you feel, play on maps that you don't usually play on. And it's, you're going to see a huge increase in your rounds that you win and overall you're just your win rate. So try it out. Let me know how you guys think about it and let's move on to tip number six. All right. Tip number six, very simple, very easy. Stop solo queuing, right? This game guys, Siege is a team game. You need to stop solo queuing. And I know that's funny and that's hypocritical coming from me because the majority of the games that I post here on YouTube are solo queue. But the thing is I'm a content creator, so it's a little bit different for me, right? But if you guys really, really, really want to improve your ranks quicker, then you need to stop solo queuing. It's just too hard to solo queue and coordinate in comparison to having a dedicated five stack who has comms and knows what they're doing, right? And again, this is a team game. Picking certain operators are important and it's just very hard to coordinate when you can't even talk to any of your teammates, right? And the common example is they have a wall electrified, you go Thatcher, but nobody goes hard breach. So now, okay, cool, you can thatch the wall, but guess what? Nobody's gonna help you breach that wall. Whereas if you had a five stack, you could develop and say, hey, somebody go Thatcher, somebody go Thermite, I'll go Gridlock, somebody bring smokes, and one other person go Osa. Let's uh, break this wall down, let's get in, let's plant right away, let's win this round, right? These are things that you just can't do if you're solo queue. So if you guys are really struggling to find teammates, my recommendation is to go on Reddit or find a Discord because there are a lot of people out there who are looking to play with other people. And I guarantee you, you will find a five stack that you can play with that's within your rank that will help you get better and also help you rank up faster, right? You avoid those filler games where you would have won if you had a five stack and you just you get up the leaderboard quicker, right? So simply put, boys, stop solo queuing. I guarantee you it will help you win more games. Let's move on to tip number seven. And tip number seven is all about positioning yourself in gunfights and learning how to quick peek, right? So the first part, positioning yourself in gunfights. I see that a lot of people, including myself when I started this game, peek corners like this. They get really tight to the wall and then they lean around and they peek, right? This is gonna get you killed so many times because what you don't realize is when you're peeking like this, your body is actually showing to the defender that is sitting and holding this angle. So they're gonna see you first and they're going to kill you before you can even get around that corner, right? So the first step is to get wide, get much wider and use this end of the wall as cover, right? And slowly pie your way through. Obviously don't peek this slow, right? When you peek this slow, this is how you get killed. You wanna use speed to your advantage, right? So you wanna peek, a little bit faster, right? But you have to pie off the angle. And what do I mean by pieing off? I mean by slowly checking each point, right? So as you come around this corner, okay, we're good. We know there's nobody here. Now we move a little bit more and we know nobody's here. Now we move a little bit more. We know nobody's here. And then boom, now we've made it all the way around the corner. We know nobody's there. Final spot to check is this corner and then we're good, right? So again, you wanna do it faster, right? You wanna go boom, 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 boom. Oh, there's somebody there. Okay, killed him, right? But if you're doing it like this, you're going to die so many times because if there's anybody playing here in this corner, you're not gonna see them when you're like this, but they're gonna see your feet, right? They're gonna see your leg sticking out and they're either just gonna kill you or the second you expose yourself, you're dead, right? So take corners much wider, as wide as you can, right? Certain spots on certain maps aren't gonna allow you to get this wide, but as wide as you possibly can and then slowly pieing off each spot, checking the corner, checking deeper, deeper, deeper. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Boom. Now, once you get good at this, this is when you're gonna wanna start to learn to quick peek, right? Let's say you get a call out and you know that there's somebody here, but you don't know if they moved after getting after your teammate has called them out, right? So what you wanna do is quick peek, and it's just like this, boom, 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 right? You see how I'm using this to quickly get information and then quickly move back into cover, right? So even if there was somebody there, there's not gonna be enough time for him to shoot me because I'm just quickly peeking and then I'm back. I'm quickly peeking and then I'm back. I'm quickly peeking and I'm back. And the way to do this is very simple, guys. It looks complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. And I wanna preface this by saying that I am not the best quick peeker in the game, right? But it is something that I'm working on constantly because I understand just how important of a mechanic it actually is, right? So again, somebody's sitting in this corner, right? 
So how do we quick peek them? It starts by leaning right or leaning left. If you're over here, right? It doesn't matter, but we're gonna do the right variation for this example. That commentator was really annoying. Okay, so lean right, move, and then, and then lean back and cancel, right? So lean right, move, lean left and cancel. Lean right, move, lean back, cancel. Lean right, move, lean back, cancel, right? So it's three buttons. It's the right to lean and move. Then you're gonna lean back and then you're gonna cancel the lean by pressing the left lean button again, right? And then you just wanna get as quick as possible with it. Boom, 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 right? And this isn't only a tool that is used to get kills, right? It's not just to get kills on this person, but it's also to get information, right? I want to know if somebody's there without having to go like this and expose myself. So I'm gonna quick peek them really quick and I'm gonna see, okay, now I know somebody, nobody's there. So now I'm gonna quick peek a little bit more. Okay, I know nobody's there. Now I'm gonna quick peek a little bit more. Okay, I know nobody's there. Okay, now I'm gonna move up. Oh, I saw his feet, but I don't know if he moved. Let me quick peek him. Okay, I saw him. Okay, now I saw him and then I go for the kill, right? So it's combining the first tip, which is swing wide and pie off the angles with quick peeking to gain information. If you guys do this, I guarantee you, you will get so many more kills. You will win so many more gunfights because you have such an upper hand on somebody who isn't quick peeking and somebody who's just stationary and waiting for you to come around a corner, right? So again, get wide, pie off corners and quick peek. And I guarantee you, you will not only get more kills, but you will just be able to clear rooms much quicker, right? So, and it will help you avoid those super annoying deaths where you were like, dang, if I just took that a little bit better, I would have killed him, right? So try it out. I guarantee you guys, it will help you. It is one of the most important mechanics in the game. It's something that all pro players know how to do, how to use, right? So just try it out. Come to the shooting range. You don't have to do it in game, right? You can slowly work on it in the shooting range. You could use this wall to help you, you know, learn how to do it. And I guarantee you, it will help you guys a lot. And with that, boys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really wanted to bring this to you guys because again, like I said, you know, the goal of this channel originally was to create a community where we can all learn from each other, where, you know, I can share some information, but you guys can also, you know, leave comments down below and say, hey, you know, you didn't set that site up correctly or, or whatever it may be, right? So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys walked away with at least one piece of information that will help you in the future. And with that, boys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.